Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 3rd. First up, this was sent in by Sir Shits a lot. This is from foxnews.com. It includes a video, but I would say really, if you want to, just skip the video. It's uh, They don't have enough time to really talk about anything, and it doesn't really give a lot of useful information. However, the article itself is really great. Um, it's called, Dark Matter Slingshot Could Send Lethal Asteroids Crashing Into Earth. And it's really cool because I get a chance to talk about the way the Milky Way galaxy actually operates and some theories they've had as to what causes um, comet bombardments and uh, how often they do occur on Earth and some of the theories behind that. Um, there have been lots of ideas. The first idea that was proposed when I was younger and taking science courses was that stars would come close to our solar system, I mean relatively close, not like that they would endanger our solar system, but they would come maybe within a um, less than a light year towards our solar system and just a gravitational pull would knock some of these comets out of the Oort cloud. Now the Oort cloud is a, a halo way beyond any of the planets, but still in the gravitational pull of the sun, but a very weak one, so any kind of force coming by could push them and cause them to fly out into outer space and some of them to actually go into orbits that take them in towards the sun. Now uh, another theory, and the one that this one proposes here, is that because of the fact that as our Milky Way galaxy um, rotates, and um, at the same time it rotates, our sun actually uh, follows kind of like a sine wave pattern where it goes up and through the plane of our galaxy and then back down again. And it does this path in around 30 million dollar, 30 million dollar, 30 million year periods it does this. And during the time that it passes through the plane of the galaxy, that may be where the concentration of dark matter is. Now, if you're not aware of that, dark matter has been talked about for quite a few years now. It's matter that we that we know is there because it has gravitational force, but there's no way we've been able to detect it. It doesn't work like ordinary matter, but it still has gravitational force. So, in other words, when the sun and the, the earth and the whole solar system is passing through the plane of the galaxy, then that is what is happening, too. Um, another theory, too, was that, um, that I've heard was that as the sun goes into the spiral arms of the galaxy. Right now we're in the Orion spiral arm and as the galaxy rotates itself what is actually happening is stars are moving in and out of the spiral arms. The spiral arms themselves never actually move so if you could go take a spaceship and go above the Milky Way galaxy and look down upon it um, in relation to the stars you would see that the arms stayed still but the stars kind of like a traffic jam they would pass into the spiral arms cluster together and then go back out again. I have a little animation here to where I can kind of show you that effect too. So it's kind of cool to take a look at this animation here. But uh, the researchers, I'll just tell, I'll, I'll read a little bit of the article here to, to give you a little bit about what, what it's like, just one paragraph from it. The researchers analyzed craters more than 12 miles wide created in the past 250 million years, which happens to be almost coincidentally the period of orbit. Um, the, the, all the stars in the Milky Way galaxy make one trip around in around 240 million years and compared their pattern against the 35 million year cycle, that's the up and down wave cycle, they found that it has been three times more likely that the craters matched the dark matter cycle than that they occurred randomly. Now, that may sound like a lot, but um, and the, also the reason why I don't really care for the video too much is it gives people the impression that um, since we're going into one of these cycles and the amount's going to increase by about three times that all of a sudden it's like a giant magnet we're going to be bombarded by comets. No, not really true. But on the other hand, uh, it's pretty likely that in our lifetime we may actually see um, a large hit, uh, you know, like a citywide type of hit. I mean, if you follow history, you know in 1908 there was the Tunguska explosion and if that had occurred over a major city, that major city would have basically been wiped out. And uh, there's not too many people alive today. I mean, you'd have to be well over 100 years old to even um, be alive when that happened. But they're not quite as rare as we think. And now, especially with the uh, explosions, we had two explosions uh, fairly recently over Russia of pretty large size uh, comets hitting the atmosphere and blowing up. So, uh, yeah, that is something to be concerned about, too. So. If you get a chance, check out that article. Another reason why I always think it's money well spent, and I like NASA's plan to go and uh, figure out how to deal with comets, asteroids, and things like that. Um, it's something we have the possibility of actually dealing with and preventing. And next up, um, if you're, I'm going to talk about three different things. I'm going to talk about Hulu, 
Netflix and Amazon Prime because those are three ways now that people, a lot of people like me have cut the cord. You don't do cable. You don't do satellite TV anymore. Basically, your viewing is Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime or a combination uh, of those above. I have two of them. I have the uh, Amazon Prime and I have the Netflix. So this is this can be of interest if any of these things apply to you. Um, Hulu is not going to raise prices. The other two are price increases, but Hulu is not going to raise prices, but they have a new ad strategy. Um, they're going to have interactive ads. Uh, the first one's going to be started by Pizza Hut to where instead of just a commercial coming on and telling you uh, eat at Pizza Hut, just a typical regular commercial, it's going to be interactive. So in other words, when it comes on, you can actually purchase a pizza. So I think that's kind of clever if you have to put up with ads anyway. Um, at least make them appropriate and interactive. So if you're watching a, a movie or something like that on Hulu and you get a little bit hungry, maybe having an interactive ad and giving you the opportunity to buy a pizza or something like that. So uh, I'd like to know what you think about that idea about um, making the ads a little bit more specific and a little bit more interactive. If you have to put up with them anyway, might as well make them useful. So what do you think about that? Would you be more interested in useful ads that um, you could actually that would actually serve a purpose for you? And Netflix, they're getting ready for a price increase. They said sometime in June, they what they did say was the, for the, if you were already a member though, so if you're on the fence, I would say sign up quickly if you're on the fence and you think you might want to because they said they're going to give a generous time period for present subscribers and not raise prices. Some people are saying maybe as long as two years. So if you're already a member of Netflix, you've got about a two-year time period to not have to worry about it too much. But um, if you're going to sign up for a new account or something like that, it could be either a dollar or two raise. Not not a huge amount, but um, I would still say if you're uh, interested in Netflix at all, possibly. I, I think it's a pretty good substitute myself. I've enjoyed it. Um, haven't really missed since I've uh, cut satellite TV off. Um, I think Netflix fills the needs of uh, me and my family just fine. So um, if you're thinking about it, get on board right now if you don't want to get hit with the price increase. And if you're an Amazon Prime member like me, you already know that in March they raised the prices. Now, I was very fortunate. I slid under the window because I was a present Amazon member, and I think they delayed that to around the middle of April. So um, I got my last renewal at $79, but it's going up to $99 now. So I would like to know what you guys think about that with the uh, price increase to $99. If you are an Amazon Prime member, are you going to stick with it during the next price increase if uh, you're not? Now, what they're offering... Too. Amazon Prime does have videos, not quite as much of a selection as uh, Netflix has, but they're going to include HBO content. You're not going to be able to get the newest and the latest HBO content, but you're going to be able to get um, previous seasons of a lot of the HBO shows and things like that. So they're trying to do that to make the price increase uh, a little bit easier to swallow for some people. Um, since I just had my renewal just recently, as a matter of fact, I think about a month ago, I had my renewal at $79. Um, I'm going to say I'm not really sure. Come next year, will I be willing to pay $99? I'll kind of have to do a little bit of cost survey and say, well, um, how many times do I actually order during the year, and would it be better for me to actually order enough stuff to get free shipping just from the amount or uh, just basically pay for shipping and maybe still end up paying less than the whole $100 for the entire year. So right now I'm totally on the fence about it. <clears throat> so anyway, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.